Hello, hello, hello. So today's the day that everyone has been waiting for. I'm really, really excited. Um, really excited. Uh, Rita, you got a request to join in. Um, yes, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. So I'm just waiting for Rita to request in, to send her request. And there we go. Yeah. Hey, Crystal. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. So I got my paper towel. I'm going to be wiping my face because I tried with the fan and the background noise was just not working. It was just not working. Um, you guys doing? Come on in. Come on in. Yes. So we know that the enemy tried us today. We know that, right? <laughs> we know the enemy tried us today, honey. And I'm he loses again. Everybody's name down who's coming in. You know, we got our 15 peoples and then we got some extra prizes. How was your day? I know we had a conversation earlier. It got better. Well, praise it, the Lord. It praise got the Lord. better. Is the music in the background, is that too loud? No, I didn't do any music because uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram acts funny, and I don't want them to take this live down later. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me turn this down. We don't want that. I'm trying to get everybody's name. So if you guys are not following me, I need you guys to follow me as you're coming in. Um, please, please, please follow me because I'm writing your names down as you're coming in. Um, because everybody that's here, this first 15 people gets a prize. So I need you guys to follow me and just send me as you're coming in. Please make sure that you guys send me a hello when you go ahead and follow me. So, you ready, Ms. Rita? About as ready as I'm going to be. <laughs> well, we got seven people on. Let's get started. We got one hour. We still got to take questions. All righty. So, good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, first, let me make a disclaimer. I am not a counselor yet. I will be returning back to school beginning the end of August to uh, receive my degree as a licensed therapist counselor. Um, so I wanted to make that disclaimer. Um, but I am a certified coach. Yes. And I have been coaching, actually counseling, to be honest, since I was a young girl. People uh, who did not know me would always come to me and share their life with me, they would share their stories with me. And I never understood why, because I was living in such a dark place. I had no understanding mm -hmm. what was going on. And I was not in the will of God. Um, I was living in sin. And let me tell you, I was having fun. Right. But what we don't understand is when we have been abused, when we have gone through trauma, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are demonic spirits mm -hmm. that, uh, that attach themselves to us. Yes. There are doors that are opened. Exactly. Which causes a lot of the emotions and a lot of the habits yes. that we pick up. So I wanted to share that first off. Um, what I do want to say, what I want everybody to do is I want everybody to make sure you have a pen and paper or notepad, something to write with. Yes. I also want you to have water or something, a beverage with you. My preference is water, um, just because the living water of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. I also want you to do this. I want everybody, I'm going to count down to three. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to take a deep breath. And I want you to release it. So on the count of three, I want you to inhale and hold it for three seconds and exhale. Got it. So three, two, one. Mm. 
yeah. and release. We're going to do that one more again. I, I felt the, the, the push to do it again. So let's do that again. Do it again. Inhale. I want you to inhale God. If you can, when you're inhaling, say, God, help me. God, heal me. Yes. And I want you to exhale. So let's do this again. And what that, I hope what that does is to bring you a sense of peace. Yes. And that it relaxes you. Because some of us, when we get on this subject, we are so tense. Mm -hmm. We don't want to talk. And we, we tense up like, oh, my God, that's a dirty thing. Right. It's not a dirty thing. It's something that happened. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're going to get over it. Yes. Um, so what I want to do, I, we've done that. Be in expectancy is another thing. I want you all to be in expectancy to receive healing and to learn something and to be open to this process. Another thing I want to state, this is the way that I healed. So it may not be your same path. It right. may not be the same order that God gives you, but this is the way that I was delivered mm -hmm. um, and healed from sexual abuse. Mm. So in order for you to know how I got to where I am now, I have to give you a little bit of my backstory. Mm -hmm. So at the age between three and four, mm -hmm. I was molested by an uncle wow. and my grandfather. Mm. And every summer, we would visit South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather, my great grandfather, I just have, I love just saying grandfather, all the great, and I understand the heritage and the legacy of it, but my great grandfather, mm -hmm. um, so that I'm clear with this, um, tried to kiss me one day. And it wasn't that innocent kiss from a grandfather to a granddaughter. He turned his mouth to me to kiss me in the mouth. And he's never done that while he reached to touch. I call them nub nubs because that's what they were at the time. I wasn't fully developed. If you look at me now, I joke with myself. I still have the body of a kid, but it's all right. Cause I'm still cute. Right. Uh, so <laughs> So that's where it started. And moving back to Maryland, I had no idea of what I was going to go through later on. It did not happen until the A, I was in middle school. So around 12 or 13, my aunt's boyfriend raped me. Um, this was a place where I loved being. My grandparents were there. All my family was there. Like that was the place to hang out on the weekends and sometimes during the week. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, my aunt, she was my favorite. We would walk to the store together and we would sing. One night her boyfriend came outside and said to me, when everyone else goes to bed, come to the basement. Remember, I was raised in South Carolina. I was raised at a time where you were told do when an adult tells you to do something, you do it and you don't ask questions. Stay in a child's place. Mm. I stayed in a child's place. Um, my friend across the street, we were outside playing that particular night. So that, that night I went into the house. I did as he said. I went into the basement and he was down there. He told me to come over to him. So I went over to him. He got down on his knees and started rubbing his cell. Then he made me begin to rub on him. And then he made me kiss him and I pulled back and he pulled me. Um, and I, I won't even get into all of the details, but you can understand where I'm going with this. Yeah. What I will say is in this, this process, I was taught how to give a man oral sex, literally professionally, because he told me how to do it, what men liked, what men didn't like. Now, mind you, I'm at the end of middle school, mm -hmm. 12, 13 years old. And like my body went through such shock and I had already started my menses. Mm -hmm. So, with the extra blood, I'm like, like, and I mean, this was very painful. Right. I can understand. It was very painful. Right. 
And when your innocence is taken from you, mm -hmm. you can go into this place of where you feel as now, hey, I'm a woman. I've arrived. Right. So now you're not looking for it. You're not seeking this out. But your body has become addicted to it mm -hmm. in a sense because those doors have been opened. Again, I can't speak for everyone else, but what I do know is I became a sex addict. Right. Your addiction may have been alcohol. You may have turned to drugs. Yep. You may have turned to cutting. You may have turned to isolation. There are so eating many different habits. things. You could have, eating habits. There are so many different things that you can turn to, mm -hmm. but you don't understand why. Right. So growing up, I remained isolated a lot. Mm -hmm. I was trying to find love in the wrong places because I already did not feel loved. I already felt rejected because the people that were supposed to love me and protect me, they took what I had, what was mine, what belonged to me, yeah, what I had the right to decide whether or not I wanted to give it away or to keep it. Right, right, yeah. So now in high school, even in the apartment complex where I lived, another thing that I turned, like I said, I turned to sex. So I'm literally, I mean, I'm having sex. I'm having sex. I'm having sex. Where it's women and men. It's two men at one time. It's a couple. So when I tell you, I, I mean, it got to the point where my body craves sex so much I was going online looking for people to have sex with. Mm. And because what happens is it affects your brain. It affects your thought process. It affects your emotions and it affects your behavior. Those were the things that I turned to. Right. My body was like, now that I got this, I need this. Right. Not I right. want it, but I need it. Um, and in that mentality, I didn't care. Mm-hmm. Because what I didn't do, I wasn't protective. Mm. I was casual. I was out there. I didn't care because why? We literally feel as if we're dying inside. Right. And we can't express it. Yeah. So it's more so, although we have our life, our heart is still beating, our mind is still functioning, not to the capacity that God created it to function in. But it's functioning. But our soul is now damaged. Mm -hmm. It's now fragmented because every person I slept with now has a part of my soul. So even now, I'm still in the midst of restore or asking God to restore my soul, Psalms 3, so that when my husband comes, my soul is made whole mm -hmm. and I can completely give myself to him. Right. So going through school, very promiscuous. Um, that led to me stripping. It led to me prostituting myself. And y'all, can I tell you, I didn't need the money. Mm. Soul ties are a powerful but, thing. Yes. But I needed the sex. My body needed what it was craving. That's just like we get thirsty. Mm-hmm. We drink sodas, we drink tea, we drink slushies, we drink alcohol, we drink everything under the sun. Like quench that thirst. Yes, but nothing quenches that thirst except for water. Nothing. You take in the right amount of water and that thirst is gone. Mm -hmm. It's gone. Um, so I did those things. And with those things, it came guilt, shame came in, fear right. came in, discouragement came in. Um, it's like, oh my goodness, what if my family finds out that I'm doing this? Just all kinds of things. What if my classmates find out that I'm doing this? Just what if anybody finds out? What are they going to call me? What are they going to say about me? Um, so all of those things set in. Mm-hmm. But I had to get to the place where, how do I get out of this? Mm -hmm. What do I do to get out of this? What do I need? Where do I begin? Can I really heal? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's okay. the tough part. Yeah, because suicide. Listen, I'm a survivor. I know you ain't got to tell me. You ain't got suicide. to tell me. The enemy used to show me my daughter who was a toddler at the time in the back seat of the car I was coming and I remember this so vividly coming home from Pennsylvania mm -hmm. because my aunt kept her for me and all I saw was me driving into that brick wall on 95 Jeez. which would have taken the life of my daughter and myself which only tells me one thing my daughter and myself, we are anointed by the power of God yes. to do great works. Yes. Because those that don't have necessarily have a calling on their lives or those that God knows that he can't use, but he wants to use all of us. But some of us reject it. We don't want to be used. We want to stay in our broken state. We want to stay in our hurting place. We want to stay in that place that just brings tor turmoil and torture. Mm -hmm. But know that God can use each and every one of you. But again, like I said at the beginning, your heart has to be open. Yes. Receptive. Yes. And in expectation to receive God's love mm -hmm. and his healing. And what happens is you might turn away from God. He hasn't left you. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. He said, be not dismayed for I am here with you. But it's us that walk away. Right. But know that you can come back. Right. At any time, all you have to do is ask. He's standing there waiting for you with open arms. And that's the place that I had to get back to. I wasn't there. I've been in church literally all of my life. My, mm -hmm. my great-grandparents were deacon and deaconess in the church. Mm -hmm. they, they taught Bible study. But what this entire experience taught me is when God called me to be the cycle breaker in my family was that this was a generational curse. Talk about it. And they do exist. Talk whether it's it. adultery whether it's sexual immorality, whether it's murder, whether it's stealing, whether it's lying, whether it's cheating, um, whatever the iniquity is, and I'm not going to leave this one out because I just heard it, witchcraft. That's a big one in families that is not discussed. Mm -hmm. But what happened is God wanted me to write about my life. And it's, I was like, why? Wow, my life is boring. Nothing exciting happened in my life. Yeah, I'm not doing it. I was disobedient. Mm -hmm. Disobedient. Yes. Um, and I had to kind of refocus. And what started happening was I started realizing who I was. Mm. Yes. And God started pulling me closer and closer. Mm -hmm. And as God began to pull me closer, guess who started pulling away? Because remember that shame and that guilt I talked yes, about? Yes, yes. I didn't feel deserving of God's love. Mm. I didn't feel deserving of God's gifts. I didn't feel deserving of God's talents. I didn't feel deserving of anything that God had for me. Wow. But what I do know is that God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. And all he asked us to do is believe. Yes. Yes. So when you believe, when you chase God, I did not chase God, y'all. I didn't chase God. God chased you. God chased me. Because there was such a hunger and a depth that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And there was a saying, uh, deliverance is for the desperate. And I was desperate mm -hmm. because I was tired of giving my body to man after man, mm -hmm. after man, 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 after man. You became spiritually depleted. 
yes. And when you get to that place, here we go again, mm -hmm. back to suicide. Right. Because you, you don't think anybody's going to rescue. You don't think God is going to rescue you. Tired. You just feel like you're so alone. Nobody's going to help me. Then you have people that come in and they tell you, I got you, sis. I got you, sis. I'm not going to drop you. You see them for about a week or two because mm -hmm. they really don't want to fight that fight. If they can really see the fight that's on your life, right? If their spiritual eyes are open, mm -hmm. it's like, oh no, I can't. Mm -mm. I'm gonna leave her. She on her own. Mm. But again, God is always with us. We just gotta call out to Him, and I mean, cry out to Him. So I found myself. Crying out to God, mm -hmm. crying out to God, crying out to God. And I had to repent because I was looking for looking to people and I had made people my God. Ooh, say it again. People became my God because I got to the point I got so discouraged. I'm like, there is no God because mm. I'm in this and I'm hurting. You know? And all of these people keep coming. Right. I'm still hurting and they're not helping. Because what you all may not realize, you have angerness, anger in you. That anger turns to bitterness. Yep, because it, it turns to take it away from you. And you want to know why. Why this happened to me. <laughs> yes. I know, because I was one. And I questioned God. And I questioned God. And when God told me to start a business, I'm like, okay. But still, you got me saying all things purposeful. How am I supposed to tell people that they rape was purposeful? I don't like it. What do you got me out here looking like? Are you serious? What? That sounds crazy. But when people started jumping in my my inbox saying to me, you're my voice. You're helping me. You're, you're speaking for me. You're, God said, that's why. Because everybody that you was going to cross paths with, majority of them people was going to need to know that you survived your situation so they can survive theirs. Yes. Yes. So that is, that's, that's a small portion of just my story. But I want to get into the healing part because I want to give you all the opportunity to ask your questions um, and whatever else the Holy Spirit leads us to do, yeah. we're going to get it done. Yes. Um, so our thinking motivates our feelings. The meaning we give to situations are the reason we feel the way we do, negative or positive thoughts. In Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, er, it says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yes. So whatever it is that we think about ourselves, whether it's positive or negative, mm -hmm. we are. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We are. Mm-hmm. I used to say to my coworkers because I didn't believe I was intelligent. So I used to say to my coworkers, I only have two brain cells. Oh, Lord. Yes. So then I began to wonder why is it I could not pick up things? Why is it that I could not um, easily uh, learn things? And I had to, the Holy Spirit reminded me, remember you kept saying you only had two brain cells. Wow. So then I had to start praying and commanding every neuron, every electron, every cell, every tissue reconnects and functions in my mind the way that God purposed it to function. Yes, yes, yes. And before I did that, I had to break every vow and every oath that I had spoken over myself. Mm. All of those negative word curses had to be broken and I had to start speaking blessings over myself. So I've jumped ahead of myself. So I'm going to screw rewind back just a, a little bit. Um, and how we feel affects how we behave. I felt like I was trash. Mm. I behaved like I was trash. Wow. Write that down, y'all. Number one is, she actually said two. Yes. So what you think so and what you say. Write it down. What you think and what you say. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> 
And what happens is when you begin to think those negative thoughts, you begin to behave in that negative manner. Mm -hmm. And because I was told I would never be good for anything other than laying on my back, Mm. which is why I prostituted myself because I believed that lie that was embedded in my mind. So I started acting on it. Um, and in, let me see, did I, I don't think I write the script, wrote the scripture down. I want, I, I believe it's in Hebrews. It is. It's in Hebrews. I don't have the scripture, but I promise I'll get it to you. Okay. It says, dear, dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice, uh, that will cover these sins. So literally what that means is once God has made you aware that you are now sinning and if you continue to do it, God got beef with you. Right. God had beef with me. So I had to start thinking about what I was doing, which is why I started pulling away Mm -hmm. from all the unhealthy relationships, sexual relationships that I was in. And then the next one is how you behave affects how you think and how you feel. So when you change your behavior, Mm -hmm. that takes you back to change your thinking Mm -hmm. and how you feel. Right. So when I began to pull away from all of those casual sexual Things, booty call, we can call it booty because that's what it was. I was feeding, let's call it feeding the demon, my God. Feeding the demon, I was feeding the demon. Right. Feeding that demon, when I began to pull away from it, is when I was be able to begin to think more clearly. Right. And begin to look at who God started calling me to be. Yes. So because my behavior changed. Mm-hmm. My thoughts change. Amen. My emotions change. Mm-hmm. And your emotions will set you up. <laughs> Straight up. Tell me about it. Straight up. Yes, they will. So we're going to go to admit. One of, and I'll actually say the first step to healing is, I said, I've said this several times now. Open your heart. Your heart has to be open to receive, and you have to be ready. Take notes, y'all. And I'm not speaking of that thing that bum bum, right? Bum bum, bum bum, bum bum. I'm speaking of your spiritual heart. The heart where the Holy Spirit desires to dwell. That's the heart that I'm speaking about. Your heart has to be open in order to receive. It really does. Next, you have to be willing to admit Mm -hmm. that this happened to you. That's a hard one. It's very hard. And the definition of admit is defined as to concede as true or valid. To acknowledge or assent to as an allegation which it is impossible to deny, to own or confess. And until you admit and you are willing to admit, you will remain in the dark. Wow. And who lies in the dark? What? Listen. The enemy. Yes, he does. Yes. And if we don't know, light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place. No, ma'am. God is not going to share a space with the devil. He kicked him out of heaven. Right. There's only one God. He said, I'm a jealous God. So you have to admit. Um You cannot allow the lies to continue to resonate with you. Sometimes we have this voice. 
it's like a recorder in our head that displays these lies mm -hmm. over and over and over and over and over again. And it plays in our head so much that we begin to believe the lies. Right. But we have to take those lies, write them down. Mm -hmm. And I challenge you to do this and, and see how it works. Write down those lies. Go in the Bible and find the words to fight against those lies. So when that lie comes to your mind, you can go right to that word and begin to speak that word. Take, take a week on each lie. Hmm. And continue to study that word, the word of God, that speaks the truth, the unadulterated truth. Yes. To who you really are. Oh, Jesus, I feel like I'm going through this all over again. <laughs> That's all right. I think that was number three, right? That's actually be open to receive. Open your heart is number one. Uh -huh. Admit is number two. Number three is accept. Oh, okay. Once you admit to yourself, I'm not right now, we're not worrying about anybody else. Right. Admit it to yourself, and then you accept it. And the definition of accept is to receive with favor, to approve, to take by the mind to understand as how these words to be accepted. And I, I know this sounds harsh. Give it to us. And that's not my intent. But as long as you keep lying to yourself and allowing the enemy to lie to you, you're going to stay broken. You're going to stay confused. You're going to stay hurt. Yeah. You're going to stay traumatized. You have to be so willing and so ready to receive the truth and accept the truth. Because God said, whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed. Yes. And if I, I y'all, when you, when you get an inkling, like God said, have the faith the size of a mustard seed. When you even get that little inkling of freedom, you feel it. And it's like, God, why have I waited so long for this? Mm -hmm. I, I need all of this ugliness, right. all of this pain, this discouragement, this torture, I need all of this gone out of me. God, I want this gone. Right. And then you really begin to cry out and ask God to really help you. Yes. And trust me, he will. Oh, yes. That's how we met. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm desperate now. <laughs> I'm tired Maybe? of this trauma in these flashbacks. De and being desperate is not pretty, guys. Being desperate is not pretty. You're going to that that person. Y'all know that ugly cry that that ugly cry us ladies do. Uh -huh. That's beyond that. That's desperate. Yeah. When you're snotting. Yep. Yeah. And you can't stop when there is a cry that's coming from the depths of your soul. Mm hmm. And sometimes it's like a screeching. Yep. That's the demons that are dwelling in you because they want you to leave them alone. Mm -hmm. The more you cry out, the more they fight. But guess what? They're not that powerful. They're as powerful as much as the power that we give them. And can I say something? That's why it's important when we're searching for counselors and therapists to find people who are filled with the spirit of God. It's Amen. very important. I don't go to everybody, y'all. I can't. Because if I go to everybody, let me tell you what they're going to do. They're not going to listen. They're going to start throwing me on medication for depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. They're going to give me something for trauma. They're going to say, oh, you can't sleep. That's your anxiety. I'm telling you. And I'm going to be around here looking crazy because I'm going to be taking like 10 pills a day for something that I didn't choose to happen to me. So... You have to be very careful with who you allow access to your spirit. 
This is why Rita's here. Because listen, <laughs> I knew what it was. That's why we that's why she got the scriptures on deck. Because I knew what it was. You gotta be careful who you allow to talk into your spirit, to speak into your spirit, to tell you. Because let me tell you something. It's it's bad enough you've already endured enough. Your innocence was already taken from you. You're already grieving the childhood you never had. You never had a childhood when this happens to you at a young age. I never had a childhood. I can't eat with, with tablespoons. I hate bananas. Whole anyway, they got to be cut up or blended. I can't do it. But we're not here about me. I just wanted to put that out there and let y'all know in order to win this free gift, y'all got to stay here until the end. So I'm going to check to make sure I got my list. But I'm sorry, Reed. Go ahead. No, it's that, thank you for bringing up that point because that's one point. Like, I'm trying to, so they can, if they have questions, they can ask questions. So Another thing. Because we at 736 and we're going to start taking them at about 750. If some of you don't know, the age at which you were abused is the age at which you remain until you're delivered. Tell them again. You do not mentally and emotionally mature. I just you started don't. mentally and emotionally maturing literally a year ago. Tell them again. You Say do stop. not age. You do not age. You are stuck at the age in which you were abused until you are delivered. Yes. And inner healing begins. Yep. That is so true. I never understood why I loved coloring so much. I never understood why a coloring book and crayons made me so happy. Tweety Bird was a thing for me. I collected so many Tweety Birds, it wasn't even funny. I just gave them all away two years ago when I moved out the old apartment. I was like a little kid, I'm telling you. I, yes. I, listen, I had natural hair. I used to wear my hair in two strand twists because I used to like the thickness of it from a little kid. Because I'm trying to tell you, you will not grow. You won't. And you are looking, what you're doing is you you wonder why you are looking for other adults, whether it's a, a mother or a father, because you are lacking yep. in that area. Your parents didn't give you what it is you needed. It's funny you said that. I gravitate to people. People start showing me love, I gravitate to them. Like, yes. I get like this. I had to explain to my pastor, like, the reason I'm gravitated to you and to certain people because I, I feel that love, and I didn't have that love growing up, so I'm like this. I'm because along with the abuse, that's rejection. Yes, that's true. Which is why anyone that shows us attention or affection we we like we grab and we hold on and we don't want to let go. We don't want to let you go. I'm a witness. Don't nobody. We don't want to let you go. I'm a witness. Yes. If I love you, I love you hard until you cross me and hard, real hard. I'm going to do whatever I can for you. I will give you the shirt off of my back and I don't even know you. Yep. I will bring you into my house and I will feed you. I've done it. Wow. Ooh, this is good. Rejection is a monster. It is. It's a monster. But okay. Let me finish up with accept. Oh. Um, so you must not only admit you were bullied, Ooh. molested, raped, sur survived domestic violence, but you must also accept the fact that it happened. Mm. No more lies. No more lies. Lies are of the enemy. Yeah. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God said to us, for I know the plans that I have for you. Mm -hmm. And God has such an amazing expected end for you. But you got to go through this process of healing first. Yes, you do. You really do. God's not going to give you that amazing life that he has for you and your brokenness. And he also tells us he's close to the brokenhearted. He loves us. Mm -hmm. 
God really loves us. But we have to take the mess that we've gone through, admit it, accept it, and the last piece is announce it. Mm. The definition of announce is, is to give public notice. Remember I told you when you admit, you're admitting it to yourself. So admit is different from announce. This is where you are giving public notice. This is where you are asking God to show you Mm-hmm. Or to lead someone to you filled with the Holy Spirit. Yep. To help you. That is the person that you can trust to share your story with publicly. Yes. The first time I did it with a church member. But the time that I truly remember is going on to Periscope telling over a few hundred people wow. what had happened to me. And this was back in 20, either 2016 or 2017. I did it on Tell Somebody. You know the young lady, Alicia Barlow? No. Okay, so it's a young lady by the name of Alicia Barlow. She was raped as well. And she has a platform called Tell Somebody. Hashtag Tell Somebody. She wrote a book and everything. And I sent her, I was at this time, this was my other page, was like me just uploading my everyday life. Um, and not statistics and facts like it is now. And I wrote out the whole thing and I tagged her. And she saw it last year, May. And she uploaded my picture along with my story. And that was the first time. Then I verbally told it on here. So let me, let me warn y'all. It's not going to be easy when it's painful. Because if you go back and look at the video on my IGTV, I have on a striped pink, white, and blue shirt. And I'm telling my story. I'm twiddling a makeup brush because I was so, it sent me so out of my mind that day. I had to leave the house and go shopping. I went shopping. I kicked on out. I went shopping. I went and got some meat. I had to get out the house because literally talking, remembering that pain of what happened sent me less. And that's why flashbacks are so powerful because you literally remember that same moment and you feel like that feeling like you're back in that situation. So when I, Brace yourselves. Write it down first. Follow, tell somebody if you want to get featured on her page. And when you're verbally ready, because it will sing you, you you'll be ready to fight your attacker. Trust me, I, I've been there, I know. <laughs> but might I add, <laughs> you'll know when you're healed when you can tell your story without crying. Yes. Continue. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Um, and matter of fact, let me go back to accept because this is something I, 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 the Holy Spirit gave me. Think about Jesus when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm-hmm. And he asked God to take the cup away from him. But what did what did he do? He died on that cross. Right. So he accepted what it is he had to do. Right. Look at Job. Job lost everything. Every little thing. His friends and his family wanted him to curse God. Well, his wife wanted him to curse God. Just just curse him and die. Job said no. Job continued to pray for his friends. Job endured and accepted what was happening to him. And look how Job was blessed. Job got back everything plus what was taken from him because he accepted it. Go read the story of Job. If you have not read it, go read it. I promise it'll bless you. God is talking to me while you're talking. Some of (laughs) y'all don't understand what and why it happened. But what y'all don't realize is that just like I can tell my story and people can reach out to me and then I can reach out to people like Rita to come on and we have this discussion. Some of y'all are meant to open up nonprofit organizations. Some of y'all are meant to talk to people. Just walk in, randomly walk up to some person that you see the signs 
of what's going on and help them deliver it, get out. Some of you ladies who've been through domestic violence, you all have purpose. You all have ministries within you. Trust me, I know it don't feel good. I was nine. And then again at 11. And almost at 13. So trust me, I know. But go back and ask God. Ask him why. And I can almost guarantee you that he will reveal why. I'm trying to tell you. Trust me on this. He will reveal to you why. Listen, Rita, did, Rita was like, nah. <laughs> you know, and I know because we had conversations. But God kept putting people on her path that needed to hear her story, that needed to hear these steps, because these are some good steps, because I'm going to work on this this week. You know? Go back and ask God why. And I can, I can almost guarantee you some of y'all done ran into people who've been through what you've been through. And they needed to hear something from you, and you didn't know how to. Ask God to help you through that process. And it's not an easy process. No, it's not. You have to be willing to do the work. If you're not willing to do the work, you're going to remain in the same position that you are in today. I, I, let, me, let, me, let me be very transparent right here, and then I'm going to get to the rest of this, and then we're going to take questions. I was one of the ones that put God or made God as a genie in a bottle. Mm. If you want me healed, you're going to heal me because I, don't, I, don't, I, I can't do this. I don't know what I was doing. Ooh, you see that comment? Mm-hmm. That's my sister. Hi, Bev. I love you. So I would rub that little bottle like, yeah, you're going to have to do this. Like, I was waiting for a miracle. Wow. Like, I didn't think I had to do anything nope, we got to, to do the work. Like, I thought I'd... No, I ain't got to do nothing. God going to heal me. Mm -mm, we got to do the work. We got to want it. I'm going to just sit here because God going to heal me. But I had to do the work. And I'm still doing the work. I still see a therapist. Listen. It's a process. It's a process. And you have to do the work. You all, we cannot be lazy. And let me, let me say this. We can't take this for granted. No. Because we remember we are spiritual beings wrapped in flesh. And remember, the Bible tells us some of these things only die by fasting and praying. So when I tell you, you're going to have to learn how to pray and have to, how to fast. Baby, you're going to have to learn. Yeah. Ask God. Really, go read your Bible. It's all there. He's written out everything we need. Yes, yes. Learn how to make the Holy Spirit your friend. Yep. Your best friend. Your best friend. Yes. As some people say. Yes. Because he will reveal. He will tell you everything you need to know. Yep. When the doctor said it, I didn't want to do this. I was at the state. I was ready to give up. I was ready to quit. I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> she called me, y'all, and I said, oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to do nothing. That I'm not supposed to be doing this. I know. No. Because that's where I was. Because I didn't see. I wanted it in my time. And when I didn't see it happening in my time. It was like I ain't supposed to be doing this. But I didn't go. I didn't go to my CEO. Who is God. To ask him. What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do this? How do you want me to set the business up? How do you want me to set the chapters up in the book? Mm -hmm. Sit down and have a real meeting with the Holy Ghost. Take your pen and a notebook and just listen. I'm going to leave it at that. Yes. <laughs> so, this is good. I'm if y'all enjoying this, hit the hearts because this is good. <laughs> Send some hearts up. In 1 John 1 and 5, John wrote, this then is the message which we have heard of him mm -hmm. and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, mm -hmm. we lie wow. and do not know the truth. Wow. 
John 1 9 says, if we confess our, offense, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse Forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All secrets, they're darkness. Mm. I have a slogan that says transparency, kill secrecy kills you. Transparency heals you. Mm. So when you're ready to be honest with yourself, you're ready to be transparent with yourself. You are ready to stop hurting Mm -hmm. God will come in and begin to work on you from the inside out. Yes. I threw myself into modeling. That's how I got through everything. Because I could dress it up. I still dress it up real good. <laughs> yes, I saw those perfect <laughs> Yeah. And it said, and I also have things we have not shared keeps us bound and in sin, although we were we were not we were we were the ones abused. Mm -hmm. Out of that abuse, because we kept it hidden, caused us to become angry, bitter, shameful, and guilty. All the while the enemy is snickering and saying, Got him. Mm -hmm. But God desires us to walk in freedom in his light. So everything you're holding in that you're ashamed of, right. that you're feeling guilty about, and you're still still dwelling in darkness. Mm -hmm. John 8, 36 tells us that whom the sun sets free is truly free mm -hmm. indeed. You deserve to walk in freedom. You deserve to be healed. And you deserve to be made whole. And y'all, this is not even it. Because it still has to be broken down into into being healed spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. That's all right. We got part two, part three, and part four. Hallelujah. Yes. So, with that being said, the six people that stayed on this live, please inbox me. Okay? Um, PYG, I need your address. Um, forevermore, I need your address. Real Connected, I need your address. Mrs. Lomax, I need your address, Queen Bev, and Toswell number one. I need you guys' addresses because you have a free gift coming from myself. Now, we're also giving away three books. Three books. Three books. Now, I'm going to let you pick the three that you want to give the books to. I, I, I don't even know. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Okay. Um... I'll actually leave that to you. You're going to leave that to me. Okay. I'm going to leave that to you. All right. So I think the three people that I want to receive or that I feel in my spirit should receive the book, um, PYG, reach out to Miss Timmons, give her your address. Um, for That's what I thought, Bev. I thought pulling names. <laughs> I didn't already start it. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely, um, forevermore. Get your address to Mrs. Simmons, please. Make sure you ladies follow her and gentlemen as well. And um, Mrs. Lomax, get your address over to Miss Timmons as well. And I'm going to purchase two more for the other two that are in the room. Bev has it. She she came from Las Vegas to the book sign. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. So anybody, I need you guys to um, drop in your questions. So there should be a question box or put them in the comments. We have five minutes. I know the clock says 7.54, but I want to make sure that we end this so that we can share this. Um, so anybody have any questions? Questions. We got the timer going. Get your questions in because there's going to be a part two because I'm pretty sure that there were some. Did you miss any steps from the ones that you gave us? Forgiveness. Write that down, y'all. My God, that that they're all important, but forgiveness is a necessity. Yes. It and you is. also need to find yourself, Natasha spoke on it earlier, you also need to find yourself a Holy Ghost filled counselor or therapist. Yes. Yes. But those are the two. And I, Lord, I could be on forgiveness all day. I'm going to, if anybody has questions, please ask your questions. I don't care what they are. 
I'm the, I guilt and shame no longer lives in this this house. So I have nothing to hide. I don't care what it is. You can feel free to ask. Um, what I can say in regards to forgiveness is I had the opportunity to forgive my aunt's boyfriend. Mm. At one particular point in time, I thought I was ready. So like when I saw him, I would make my way over to say something to him. But I wasn't ready. And yeah, no, I know I'm not ready. So we got <laughs> I was not ready. <laughs> I ain't ready for that yet. Even though God told me why, I'm not ready for that yet. Um, yeah. But what happened was my grandmother, she's 96. I went to check on her house one day. Mm -hmm. And I rode by his place of business. I didn't know. Generally, I turn on my GPS. Uh -oh. I didn't turn it on this day. Oh, wow. I just drove. Holy Spirit said, look to the right. And I looked to the right. He was outside sweeping. And I said, death. <laughs> and I said, Papa, is it that you really wanted me to go look at the house for her? Or was it because you want me to go and tell him I've forgiven him for what he's done to me? Wow. I didn't get a response immediately, so I went to the house because that's what my grandmother asked me to do, to check on the house. I left the house and came back the same way. Now, mind you, I was supposed to be going to work. Mm. I was supposed to go look at the house and go to work. I came back the opposite direction to come to him. I sat in my car for a few minutes. He was still outside when I came back. I said, Papa, if this is your desire, mm -hmm. I need you to give me the words to say to him. And I need for you to make sure, help me to make sure this is what we are doing today. Wow. I prayed. I got out of the car. And I said, hi, you don't remember me, do you? Mm. Because of the way that he was looking at me. He said, you look familiar, but I, I can't Don't you I it? can't really place it. And I was like, okay. I said, I'm Rita. And he hugged me. Wow. I didn't flinch. I didn't jump. I embraced him. Wow. And when I embraced him, I said to him, God sent me here today to tell you that I forgive you for what you did to me as a child. Mm. Oof, our time was just starting to count down. <laughs> and he apologized. Wow. He had completely forgotten about it until God reminded him. They do forget. They do forget. But God reminds them. Yes. Guys, ladies. Gents, I hope this was a blessing for you. We don't want this to cut off because you know what? We're going to add this to the page. Thank you guys for coming. If you need a reference, come back to this reference. And you can also reach out to Miss Rita Timmons on her Instagram page or her website, www.ritatimmons.com. I love you all. We will be doing a part two, maybe three, maybe four, whatever the Lord says. But you guys have a blessed day. Remember, get us your um, addresses so we can get your gifts out to you. We love you all. Bye. Thank you, guys. God bless you. I'll talk to you later, Rita. All right. Bye.